There are actually way more Asian Americans in poverty than you might think. So we got to talk about these new stats. Yeah, everybody think the immigrant is like a rich nerd, but that's just me. What about the people at the restaurant I go to? We got to talk about it. NPR just dropped this new study. One in 10 Asian Americans live in poverty. Their experiences very widely research says. This is an article by Juliana Kim. And man, it got posted on Reddit and there's a lot of comments. Andrew, we're going to talk about it, break it down, give you all sides of the angle. Make sure you like, subscribe, Turn on your notifications. Check out Smile Last Sauce at SmileLastSauce.com. Andrew, in New York City, Asians actually have the highest poverty rate. However, a lot of people, Andrew, would not believe you if you said that, right? Yeah. No, I mean, because everybody sees these stats. You know, I can point at this median household incomes. Ooh, Indians, Filipinos, Japanese, Chinese are even all higher than the average U.S. population. On an aggregate macro scale. But in New York City, Andrew, there are actually a ton of recent immigrants that are elderly. And they have incomes oftentimes, Andrew, below 15 thousand dollars usd a year yeah so let's look at some aspects of this article david um first of all it said uh a lot of chinese korean cambodians vietnamese bengali lao and pakistani people they have a poverty rate of about 10 to 13 percent you know somewhere in that range and then on the higher end uh 17 percent for Hmong people 16 percent for mongolian and 19 percent for burmese people um and then obviously there's kind of like your Japanese, Sri Lankan, Filipino American, which range between like six and 9%. Here's an interesting stat from the article. They quote a lot of different research guys. Here's a link in the bottom. It says the analysis also found that 26% of all Asians in America living below the poverty line are located in three major cities, New York City, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, these are the big Asian cities, right? These three cities. Literally. And there's a lot of immigrants that a lot of people, you know, when people think about Asians in America, Andrew, aren't they often thinking about Asians in the suburbs? Yeah. Maybe like uh, studying hard, trying to be a valedictorian or something like that. Or They're break, thinking about the whiz can. Break dancing in the ABDC style, Jabberwockies dance group or whatever. You know yeah. what I mean? But going to 88 Rising concerts. However, there's a ton of people coming over that are really uh, uneducated and don't really have the language skills to secure like a stable mainstream source of income, right? Yeah, I mean, I would, I believe the stats say that most of the Asian Americans in poverty are foreign born and immigrants. Yes, yes. So here's the thing, a lot of people think immigrants don't count as Asian Americans, but Asian Americans in this term literally just means Asians living in America. So you could have arrived 10 days ago and you now count as an Asian American if you live here. Right, right, because because your intention is to come here and stay and, and have your kids stay and yeah. your grandkids stay to become American. Yeah, and you know, if you come from a poor family over there and your English profic proficiency is not very high, then over here you really only have limited opportunities until you can get your English to a point where one, you can learn new things very easily, very quickly from all the resources in America and also work more higher paying jobs. Right, right, right. Um, somebody said Asian Americans spoke about not knowing how to save or invest. So 57% of Asian adults living in poverty said they were unable to save for emergencies this past year. And then a lot of people were able to say that they just don't know. They don't know about investments. They don't know about financial literacy. And here's the interesting thing, Andrew, the Asian community there's, it's so variable, but it, it's it's true that even internally within the Asian community, very few of the discussions center around the impoverished crowd, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. It all centers around representation and all these beautiful Asians and the rich Asians. Or, or the, the, the Asians rich uh, fobs and Ferraris yeah. coming over as international students, or, right? Or, oh, like, I'm so, I can't get into my Yale or Harvard, ah, you know? And, and that's a real side. That's a real side. Yeah, I'm not saying those aren't problems, but uh, definitely there are a lot of Asians in poverty. Now, obviously, you can say, hey, it's not my responsibility to get people out of poverty. That's not my family. That's a possible response, right? Right, right, right. I'm going to talk about that later. And last but not least, in the NPR article, it stated, Andrew, U.S.-born Asian Americans express skepticism that educational guarantees success. So basically, foreign-born Asian participants in the study believed that education was the key to getting out of poverty. U.S.-born Asians said that it depended on the type of degree that you got. So actually, I uh, I agree and disagree with everybody. I think getting educated is really important, but it is true that if you just get educated and then you pursue like fields that really have a very low earning cap, 
that's not going to be the best way to lift yourself out of poverty. Right. Um, anyway, let's just get into some quick thoughts that I have about this. I think that the truth is it, it's tough because there's a lot of people who come over and you, maybe you're a refugee, maybe you're a non-refugee, maybe you just are a political dissident, maybe you just came over seeking wealth. You, it's true that you may have physical disabilities, you may have mental disabilities, you may have an emotional disability, or you may just have been so coached from a system, Andrew, deep in the rural mountains or the villages, it's difficult to come to a place like New York City, LA, or Los Angeles and figure out how to fit into like the hyper late stage capitalism. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really, really difficult. And I think that that's why certain types of immigrants, especially when they immigrate in an older age, Andrew, around New York City, you see old Chinese people from China picking up cans or uh, rummaging through garbage for a living. Yeah. And I think that that's something that is uh, really, really striking. I, I do think that this, here's also the truth. Poverty exists everywhere. Mm -hmm. I've lived in China. You see poverty all the time. Mm -hmm. You're going to see poverty. How do you think Asian Americans should react to seeing somebody from that is Asian or their group being living on the street or living in poverty? Yeah, I mean, I think that uh, it happens. There's obviously not uh, visually a lot of homeless Asian people, but there are some. And, you know, it just goes to show you here, We the the probably the closer you are in... in to, if you're part of one of the groups that has a lot of poverty, you have a higher chance of uh, possibly drug use. And then once you go down that path, you're an immigrant. Maybe you don't speak English. I mean, I've definitely seen some of these Asian-looking homeless guys out here. It doesn't sound like their English is very good. Obviously, it sounds like that they had drug issues. And then now they're out on the streets. Right. Uh, but also poverty, I do want to note, just because you're under the poverty line doesn't mean you don't have a home either. You know what I mean? Like, people can have... Homes can literally have shelter, like um, an apartment or a house somewhere and still be under po the poverty line. Right, right, right. Also, by the way, guys, we want to stress there was a huge jump in uh, poverty improvement from first generation to second generation. Because if you're born in America, then guess what? You've had access to American preschool and kindergarten and first grade and second grade. And it's going to lend you to help figure things out. Um, somebody said uh, that there was a lot of talk about the model minority myth, Andrew, uh, the poor mingling with the middle class, the middle class trying to get to upper middle class and rich Asians. And do they actually care about each other once they're in America? Um, I will say this. I don't think that Asians of different socioeconomic classes make it their mission to think about each other. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I don't think the rich Asians make it their mission to help the poor Asians because they didn't do that when they got rich in Asia either. Right, right, right. So it's just like, I don't, yeah, I just don't think that it's very Asian in a weird way to like care about the poor unless you're really religious in a Buddhist or uh, converted to Christianity type of way. Um, somebody said, most suburban Asians tend to live in a bubble mindset. I know I was raised in an upper middle class enclave in the Bay Area, and I wasn't even aware of Asian poverty until I left as an adult. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't think, I think Asians have a lot of shame. And even if they are a poor family, they don't like to show it. Obviously, living in dense uh, New York and Lower East Side, like we see it a lot. We used to live in this uh, walk-up building where some of the units were newly renovated and then some of the units still belong to families who probably might fall under the poverty line. Because that, by the poverty line, guys, I am referring to this where it's, it's by family size. And if you have a family of one individual and you make less than about 15000 you might come under the poverty. But if you're a family of four and you collectively make less than 30000 you would fall under poverty. Right. Um, this next comment was addressing this study. And we're going to pop up the study here by three Asian American sociologists. And it was talking about second generation college education attainment. And Vietnamese have a 30% jump from 40% uh, to 70%. It is the biggest jump of every group. Every group generally sees a jump, though. Interestingly enough... You're, so you're saying Vietnamese 
people make the biggest jump out of poverty from the first to the second generation. Yes, yes. Using college education attainment as a proxy. Mm. It's not a perfect one-to-one, but there's a lot of studies that show getting college educated is a great way to get out of poverty. Their numbers jump from 26% to 62.4. Interestingly enough, Filipino Americans are the only group where the second generation of Filipinos has less college degrees than the first generation that came over. Mm. And I think that that's because a lot of my Filipino friends that I grew up with like work for UPS or uh, like figure out like a more blue collar lifestyle, become like barbers and stuff like Mm. that. Obviously not all. Some of them become DJs. Some of them go to school too. It's a variance, but certainly Filipino kids, second generation tend to enter like more unorthodox fields for Asians. Um, Somebody said, when I see a homeless Asian woman, it really messes me up because it reminds me of somebody in my family and it's not a sight that I'm used to seeing. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I guess- how do you think Asians should react to seeing homeless Asian people? Because it's not something that you're really accustomed to seeing. But here's the thing, Andrew. Every other group, they have to be accustomed to it, whether you're white, black, or Latino, because it's more common. Mm-hmm. So should Asians, like, freak out when it does happen? Or is it just like, we should just look at it like we're back in Asia? Because if you go to Asia, and you've been to any Asian country, even Japan, but obviously much less in Japan relative to other parts of Asia or Korea, but it's like, or Singapore has a lot less, Taiwan has a lot less. There are homeless people, uh-huh. even in Asia. So, But as Asian Americans, should we be like freaking out that there's homeless Asian Americans? Yeah, I mean, let us know in the comments down below what you think. Um, somebody said the model minority myth is one of the worst things because it's gonna make us ignore this 10% of Asians living in poverty. For me, this general statement is like, it, it, it's, a, it's just a trend. I don't really believe in the model minority myth or disbelieve in it. It's just people tend to look at narratives in an overly simplified way. We have to include impoverished Asians into the narrative. Um, that way they can get to the solutions. And the solutions primarily would probably be English proficiency or translators that can help them get into the right programs. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of people they might not even be aware of the programs that they qualify for and can take advantage of. Exactly. And a lot of like Asian immigrants, especially, they don't understand how you can invest in America or get a loan, open up a business or things like that. I mean, I would say, yeah, generally in the Asian community, maybe there's a little bit more talk about that than maybe some other communities. But yeah, overall, if you're, if you just do not understand the language of the land, it just makes things everything harder. Right, right. Um, I think having family here, getting plugged into a system, that's why these churches and community organizations are so important. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll say this, man. Asian poverty is real. And uh, it's it's difficult because you can never eliminate poverty from the world and imbalances and stuff like that. People are going to be born into different types of families with different knowledge bases and different networks. And their bo- identity they're born with or the decisions they make allow them to maneuver into different spaces and get into this knowledge base or get into this tribe or get into this fishbowl. And I think that a lot of that in life like can determine sort of the, the tree branches and the forks in the road that your life ends up taking, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that this is a really interesting study. I think that people are born different. I will say this, for everybody who really wants to help people and they're they're the bleeding heart of their group of friends or something like that, it's really important that you help people closest to you. That's Mm -hmm. the first thing. And then after you feel like you've stabilized that, first of all, you should encourage the people you help to help other people to pass it down, but then help in your immediate community. Yeah. Because that's where you have the most impact of and that's whose ear that you have the most to because there's no, the the, the biggest thing is like talking to people whose ears are open and receptive and they're like a sponge and they could soak up the knowledge that you give them. Yeah. I I I also think that there's more and more YouTube content uh, in language, like in Asian languages. I mean, I know I see a lot in Chinese. Maybe that's the most prevalent one because obviously a lot of people speak Chinese. Uh, so it might be harder to find resources in more niche languages, but I think just sharing knowledge amongst the community. Yeah. The people closest to you is important, you know, but yeah, again, everybody has their choices and everybody does come in different situations. So, um, all you can really do is also have some empathy. For, for sure. Situations. Less scams, guys. Less spam and more teaching, guys. Come mm-hmm. on, man. Especially the scamming in the immigrant community in 2024. It's way out of hand. Uh, anyway, guys, let us know what you guys think of Asian poverty and these stats in this study in the comments section below. Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.